Hello everyone and welcome to Dueling with Downton and today I'll be pitching to you three ideas for the brand new summoning mechanic that will soon be coming to Yu-Gi-Oh! Rush Dueling format. Now please note this video is being created before episode 57 so if any new information comes out after 57 or before then then of course that would debunk any of these ideas it's just going to be a bit of an oopsie daisy. Hopefully you enjoyed this video, here are three ideas, let's go through them one by one. But of course, if you have any thoughts, opinions, or any ideas of your own, let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to hear how creative you can get. So starting off, let's start off with Combination Summoning. This summoning mechanic would use the extra deck slot that we have in Rush Duels. It's been confirmed that there is one, but at the moment we're not actually using it. So why don't we store within the extra deck combination cards. These cards would depict two monsters performing one attack in unison. For example, the monsters could be Metagears, the Striking Dragon, and Phantom Strike Dragon, Mirror Gears. They could appear on the card artwork using their signature attacks together, obviously looking a lot cooler than this example up on screen, but this is just to kind of show you what I mean through visual representation. This method of summoning would require the sacrification of both monsters depicted on the combination card artwork. But the cards that are sacrificed do not go to the graveyard. Instead, you have to banish these cards. However, you might be thinking, well, that's pretty bad. Why would you banish two really strong monsters just for the sake of one? Well, here are some advantages of doing combination summoning. You would gain one card with an attack value of both original monsters' attack points added together. So here, as you can see, Metagears has 2,500 attack, while Phantom Strike Mirror Gears has 2,500 attack, making their combination card have 5,000 attack points. That's pretty hard to overcome, and is pretty strong when attacking, considering you only have 4,000 life points at the start of every duel. But at the same time, another advantage of using combination summoning would be if you have mirror gears and meta gears on the field normally, you're using up two of your three summoning spots. With a combination monster, you only have one slot used up, so you can summon two more monsters for more attacks. That would be a big benefit. Plus, on top of all of this, Every combination summoning would be different because they would have a unique effect that kind of links similarly to the original monsters effects but at the same time making it so that you want to use different variations of combination summoning monsters. Plus they also gain once per turn this card cannot be destroyed by traps or card effects making it much more durable and desirable to use from a user consumer like you and me perspective if we were to use them in the real world game. Plus this makes your opponent have to think more and strategize more in trying different methods and ways of destroying this card twice per turn and if for example you have that 5000 attack points that's going to be pretty difficult and hard to overcome. Now I hear what you're saying this is no different than fusions, which we've had previously before in the older Yu-Gi-Oh! series. But I say this is different because we're not actually making a new monster, nor are we making new designs of a different monster. Instead, we're taking two monsters that already exist, putting them in a pretty cool design looking card, and freeing up some spaces on our field, while at the same time making them stronger and more robust. Think of it this way. If you played the game Card Fight Vanguard, you may know that they actually have Legion Summoning, which is where you have your main Vanguard and a card that links to it, and basically means you've got two Vanguards, which the power is added together. It's similar to that more so than Fusions. So I think this would be really fun and really cool to have when playing the Rush Dueling format, and in the anime, it could make a really big impact when having that dramatic scene. So let's move on to number two. Now, I've seen this next one appear quite a lot, but this one is called Extra Play. So, have you noticed that every Gohar sibling has used a field spell within their duels against our heroes? 
So what if the card that Yuo is creating is a field spell? The forces the dual discs to gain another monster zone. Being able to summon 4 or 5 monsters in total while still using the rush dueling format and being able to summon as many monsters as you want, this would be a powerful advantage over any opponent. This will allow you to attack more and have better link up plays and think of better strategies to use with your more monsters you can summon. Your opponent will be stuck using 3 monsters while you potentially have 4 or 5. Like I said, an overwhelming advantage in that regard. However, this wouldn't be a big devastating way to strike fear into the hearts of our heroes like Maximums did in Season 1. If you're looking at it from an anime perspective, that is. So, although this is a fun idea in concept, it might, just, might not translate too well within the anime series. And also does run the risk of pushing Rush Duels slowly and slowly towards returning to the Master Duel format. Which is something that we really don't want. Because honestly, Master Duels are a bit too overcomplicated with all the summoning methods we have. And if we start pushing Rush Duels back towards that, that's going to be degressing instead of progressing, in my personal opinion. But it's still a pretty cool design. So again, to summarise, this card that Yuo is creating, or Yu is creating, is a field spell that allows you to have extra plays by forcing the dual disc to have extra monster zones. But time for an idea point five, a middle ground. Still sticking with the theme of field spells, what if the card that you is actually creating, or Yuo is actually creating, is not the new summoning mechanic. What if that card at the end of episode 53 is actually a red herring? Instead, it could just be a field spell that he wants to use himself when he duels Yuga and friends, allowing him to actually summon multiple legend monsters. I think a field spell that would allow you to do that would be awesome. After all, the Goha siblings have all been using older slash legacy cards like we know Millennium Shield is soon to arrive soon, we just don't have confirmation as to who's using it. It's just a thought, however, the one thing that debunks that idea about the card being this field spell that can allow you to summon multiple legacy monsters or legend monsters is Otis has been using legend monsters throughout the series, so if anyone is to have that card, it's probably going to be Otis, not Yuo. But just imagine how cool it would be to see one Dark Magician and one Dark Magician girl on the field at the same time. Of course, if you don't have something that allows you to summon multiple Legend cards, this cannot happen. Or just three Blue Eyes White Dragons. That'd be pretty fun. So finally, for the end of this video, let's talk about idea number three. And that, of course, is Armor Summoning. A mechanic that does take some explaining but I think it still has some potential in being pretty unique and interesting within the Yu-Gi-Oh! 7's brush dueling format. This would be basically when you summon one or two monsters with zero attack points. These monsters would be known as armor monsters. However, because they have zero attack points, they have high defense value points and would equip to your main monster that you already have on the field. You can only have a maximum of two armor monsters on the field at one time. You need a main monster to attach the armor to. So for example, say we have Seven's Road Magician on the field. You would summon one or two of your armor monsters and those would then attach itself to that Seven's Road Magician, giving it a defense boost and some lives during battle, making Seven's Road a lot harder to destroy. Now, much like how maximum monsters can't be destroyed by traps, these armor monsters would also be given some form of immunity. Plus the ability to switch your main monster into defense mode at the end of your turn. So this allows you as the user of the armor and main monster, so Seven's Road in this example, to still use Seven's Road Magician's effect and attack with it, while also securing yourself for a safe turn against your opponent, because after you attack, you'll go into defense position 
and you would take advantage of that added defense value. So the main gimmick for this mechanic would be protection, as your opponent would first have to destroy the pieces of armor attached to your 7th Road Magician before destroying that 7th Road itself. So let's just say for this example, every piece of armor attached to 7th Road has a defense value of 1,500. So it adds 1,500 to 7th Road's original defense value per piece of armor it's wearing. So this example, it makes it 4,500. Your opponent destroys one of the pieces of armor. Your 7th Road would drop down to 3,000 defense. One bit of armor would shatter and destroy. Your opponent destroys the second piece and then that shatters and destroys and your sevens road magician returns to its original 1500 defense your opponent attacks one more time destroying sevens road thus getting rid of that pesky magician so to clear things up you would first need one monster on your field if you were the opponent attacking that exceeds 4,500, then your second monster would have to exceed 3,000 attack points. And then your last monster could just exceed the 1,500 the Sevens Road originally has. That might sound really strong and broken, but of course we could tweak some of the effects, like make it only immune to traps or spells, meaning you can destroy one piece of armor by activating a trap card or a spell card. We could play with it that way so it makes it a little bit more balanced. <coughs> now then looking at it from an anime perspective you can have the visuals to where your equipped monster sevens road in this example would wear the armor that just sounds silly and goofy but it's totally something the anime would do for comedic effect Plus, it will look pretty cool, and it will be easily accessible to any duelist with the Yu-Gi-Oh! 7s. Unlike Maximum Summoning, where it feels big and dramatic, Armor Summoning could be something that you can give to, say, a Roman or a Gakuto, and they could use it without being too ridiculously overpowered and intimidating. Plus, on the plus side from the anime perspective, it would make the duels last a little bit longer and adding a bit more spice and flavour of interestingness to the duels when watching them in the show. Because something that Yu-Gi-Oh! 7s actually needs to do a little bit in my personal opinion is kind of entertain us more with the dueling aspect. So seeing, say like your Yugas, your Rooks, your Romans, your Gakutos, think of strategies to overcome the enemy's armour monster that is immediately being intimidating and looking down on them. I think that would be pretty unique and cool. Can you just imagine Gaku Ting armor? Yummy ruler wearing that would just look ridiculous, but I'd love it. So those were three ideas for the next summoning mechanic within Yu-Gi-Oh! 7's the anime. What do you think of these ideas? Do you think they are completely nonsense? Or have they piqued your interest a little? and you want to find out more. Well, let me know all of your thoughts and opinions in the comment section down below, plus any ideas that you have for the new summoning mechanic. I am thinking of a few more ideas, so if I manage to come up with a few more before uh, the new mechanic gets revealed itself within the anime, then of course I will come back with a follow-up video. But for now, I do hope you've enjoyed these ideas, and again, love to hear yours, but with all that said and done, then yeah, comment, like, subscribe, all that good stuff, and I'll see you next time. I had no idea how to end this video, but I hope you have an amazing day. Alligator, Martinet, goodbye!